You, what do you want your legacy and what do you want to be known for? I want to be known for you need to get to almost a level of like delusion and obsessiveness with your craft. Talent will only bring you so far. Practice every single day. Push your edge because that's what's going to take you to the next level. That's what's hey gonna... everyone, welcome back to our channel. It is a tribe called Dylan Podcast. I'm Angie Dylan And I'm Rose Dylan And I'm Alvin Dylan And for those of you that can see our special guest right now and for those of you that are our audience listeners, we are so so excited to welcome Ravina Oberoi, CEO and owner of the very popular Just Cakes Bake Shop on the podcast with us today to speak to us about her entrepreneurial journey into the world of baking. We're super curious to learn from you, Ravina, and find out where your motivation and your creativity comes from. Um, to our audience, those of you that tune into our episodes every week, you know that we're in the business of bettering ourselves with the hopes of elevating motivating and inspiring our listeners with the stories that we share on our podcast. So we really hope today's episode is an inspirational one for you. Welcome to the podcast. Yay. 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 Thank you so much. I'm so excited. We are big fans of yours. Well, thank you. Uh, you are like Madonna to me. <laughs> you are the cake Madonna. <laughs> you, are Madonna. you are the cake Madonna, the pastry Madonna. We are big fans of yours. Thank you. Uh, and we're so excited to have you uh, on the podcast today. I'm excited to be here. Perfect. This is a now, great, thank great you. Now, Saturday. good stuff. And your energy, you're exuding energy. Oh, yeah. Love it. Love so, it. for our viewers, she's radiating this very Aww, strong, that's positive really energy. Sweet. She's yeah. vibrating really here. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, sweet. that's like the ultimate compliment to me. Yeah. So, you yeah, are. You. It's got to be some of that Nipsey vibe. <laughs> <right now. That's laughs> what, anyone who's a Nipsey fan, anybody on that level. Yeah. 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 Before we started, sure. we found that Ravina and mm. Alvin have Nipsey Hustle in yes. common. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the marathon continues. Marathon continues always. And that's the, that's the mantra always yeah good for you that's mm -hmm. amazing now before we get into conversation with you learn about you and just really kind of poke that pretty brain of yours <laughs> to figure out what goes on when you're you know doing all of your social reels sure. and your baking and the creative side i want to get into our win of the week segment sure. so win of the week is just something that we highlight uh, a positive thing that happened in our life and just like a pat on the back and it just totally. keeps that self-confidence and that self-motivation going week by week for us and we find that it helps to raise our vibration Totally. Okay. Um, would you like to go first? Sure. Okay. Oh wait. I, okay. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> do you want me to go? Um, would you? Do you want to go first? You, you go first. Okay. It's all good. Okay. This is a funny one, you guys. So I went into the office last week, and someone said to me, "Oh, I think there's something in your hair," and I'm like, "Okay." And they came here, and they turned. They're like, "Oh, it's hair." And I looked, and it was literally like two inches. And I'm like, "Oh my god, this is really so weird." I went to I the bathroom. I went and looked. I'm like, "Oh yeah." So for those of you during COVID, um, not sure if this, if anyone experienced this, but I experienced uh, hair loss. So uh, when I, when I got COVID, uh, I didn't lose my sense of smell or my sense of taste or anything. I bounced back. But a couple months later, I noticed like chunks of hair coming wow. out and falling. And I would like to say I got thick hair and I was a little spooked but I figured out the remedy, which was an onion juice remedy. But oh. all my little baby COVID hairs are coming back. <laughs> no hence the static. The Albert Einstein frizzies. Uh, no amount of Moroccan oil could tame these bad boys down. <laughs> but my COVID baby hairs are growing back. So Amazing. I'm super happy. That means that more hair to come on more episodes. Amazing. Nice. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. Over to you. Rose. Okay. Um, as our reader, our, our audience knows, I'm a reader. I like to read books. And so I came across a book called Culture Shock. Um, I will put the little image on here, but it's a great book. If you are in the corporate world and you're trying to figure out what's happening with all this change after the pandemic, um, I think it's a really great book, book for managers, vice presidents, CEOs to pick up and understand that the culture landscape has shifted at work mm -hmm. and how to kind of embrace and change um, moving forward forward with your with your work organization. So I really recommend reading that book. It was really helpful for me to understand the changes that are happening in my workplace. Nice, Rose. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm going to steal that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah from awesome. a cultural lens, I'm going to steal that one. Yeah. Too. Culture shock. Yeah. Great book. Yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. Cool. very cool. Al, what about you? I had one win that I had written down before, but then after meeting Ravina for the first <laughs> time, and whenever I meet anyone that is a Nipsey fan <laughs> on a certain level that she is that understands that, I'm like, that's going to be my new win because oh, that's awesome. anyone that's a Nipsey fan on yeah. a certain level understands to think differently. Yeah. And you're thinking not like how other people are thinking. So that's my win is oh. I've met a fellow 
Uh, Nipsey, Nipsey fan that's just as passionate about Nipsey as totally. I am. You, you gotta meet my husband, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> like he's a whole nother level. Like he's just wow. Like that's that's how I got introduced to Nipsey wow. and, and his story. But like, yeah, my husband's like a full on. Like you, you guys would be great friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta meet him one day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, gotta him, you gotta meet him over cookies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, Ravina, what yeah. is a win of the week that you want to talk honestly, about? Honestly, I as I was jumping to say it, it's an easy one for me. Yesterday we um, hosted hosted 80 of our oh sorry 40 of our wedding couples so about 80 people actually 100 people actually ended up coming through to our brand new production facility our warehouse and we did a full night of tasting cake and talking to my brides and grooms and it was just it was such a full circle moment and it was like I I remember just being on the staircase just looking down at everybody and I'm like these are that this is like my tribe. Like this is like the people that su- have supported me for the last 14 years. And I'm like, I can't believe we're here. Like, I literally cannot believe we're here. Wow. So I'm like still like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like so big. Um, but yeah, it really just like that was the validation I needed because things have been tough with the expansion and construction, especially end of 2023. It's been really tough. Um, but then it just it was just that like little glimmer of like hope and light that like I really really needed so I'm really coming off of that like I feel with such a good momentum and such good energy so yeah amazing Kudos amazing to the awesome. I always say your vibe attracts your tribe yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. good stuff and I have a little confession to make that yeah. you said right now about the the brides and the couple yeah. so a couple years ago I know when you launched this on your social channel yeah. um there was you do the cake testing yeah. cake testing for brides yeah. so my boyfriend and I were gonna pretend to be uh <laughs> like husband and wife or fiance and we're like should we go just because I'm a big foodie I'm a big fan of yours and I'm like I'm like but I'm like we're kind of lying and <laughs> Let's just go anyway. Sample. It was like twenty bucks or something at the time. We get to yeah. try all these cakes, and I'm like, now we know. Like down the road, if we get married, like what cake? Oh, and that's something about it just didn't feel authentic Aww. to me. We didn't come, but yeah. You know what? I'm actually thinking of just making our sample boxes like just available to order because so oh, many people just want to have like yeah. a cake night, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like you try like six different flavors of cake, like come like with your girls or with your yes. crew or whatever. Yeah, that would, that would Yay, be. Yay, that makes yeah. sense. You're, even like, you inspired a brand Thank you. See? <laughs> I, I honestly secretly, and then he's like, well, what are we going to say? What about the date? And I'm like, oh, yeah, there's too many <laughs> lives after lives. We just won't go. That's hilarious. No, anytime, I'll, I'll make you a box. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, now let's get into, mm-hmm. let, before we get into some heavy-duty conversations, I know that when you and I were doing some email exchanges yeah. back and forth, we were trying to set the date. And one of the dates that we actually set, and we didn't realize <laughs> after the fact, was that we were going to do a recording with you on the day of the Super Bowl. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> Ravina, do you, are you a football fan? Because I'm good. We can yeah. tape. And you said to me, no, heck, I, I throw a Super Bowl party <laughs> every, year, every year. Right? And then through the email exchanges, yeah. I got to know that you're an Usher fan. Yeah. Okay. So I want to know what team were you rooting for okay. and what did you think of Usher's performance? So I actually am not a football fan. I'm a Super Bowl fan. <laughs> so like, I just like hosting a Super Bowl party. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, actually, I root for the Cowboys. Oh. So, uh, a lot of people root for Cowboys. I've heard this. Yeah. yeah. So I root for the Cowboys. Unfortunately, they got far, but not not far enough. Um, anyways, uh, and yes, the Super Bowl party, I've been hosting it for the last, like, yeah, the last three years. And it's always a great time. So I get up at like six, seven in the morning. I make like... 12 different appies. I like, it's my Holy day. Like it's my wow. day to shine. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, we host all of our friends and stuff like that. And the Usher halftime, it was amazing. Incredible. I'm seeing him at Lovers and Friends in Vegas this, <gasps> this year as well. I'm so excited. Do you know what Lovers and Friends is? I've heard of it. Okay. Yeah. It's that music festival with all of the, like uh, old school, like Alicia oh. Keys, Ludacris, Lil Wayne. Um, I actually think, uh, yeah, Usher will be there. Um, Mary J. Blige, like all of them, oh, all of the wow. R&B, people um yeah 90s 2000s kind of thing uh so i'm so excited for that um yes i'm seeing usher there but yeah i I, me and my sister we're we're both usher fans so like we're just on the couch just like having a jam session it was so great Um, okay what did you think about when he took off his shirt was that cheese or were you like oh yeah you got abs Um, so like yeah like good for you yeah um that's it. Yeah. <laughs> he does a little cheese, right? Yeah, we don't he's, a, he's a little, like, I don't know. Well, he's a little, for his like, age, I was yeah. like, good oh, yeah. for you. Good for him, for right? Because sure. he's in his 40s now. For yeah. Sure. He's, a, he's a little 
Yeah. Feisty. Oh, good yeah. stuff. Okay. Now, this, now I want to talk about here and now you fill yeah. so many roles. Mm-hmm. You've had so much success with, you know, the just cakes bake shop. How many locations are there? So there's two storefront locations and then we just opened up our production facility, as I mentioned. So that's where like, we're slowly but surely moving all of our baking there. So we're able to kind of distribute Canada wide. That's our next goal. So wow. right now we're in about 80 other retailers across BC. So all of blends coffee, all fresh fruit markets and we're, and small smaller cafes and retailers as well and we're slowly surely working on that and growing that and then we also have our vending machines too so that's mm-hmm. like our sister company the jar bar two and vending machines we're gonna put a third one on on our fleet uh this summer so i'm really excited about that yeah very wow. cool okay i want to get into because sure. for our listeners and our audience that don't know uh who you are mm-hmm. you are the cake boss uh you are the <laughs> cake, cake boss lady yes yeah. cake <laughs> boss you lady. are the cake the metro vancouver cake disruptor oh, i can go on and on i just think you're so multi-talented oh, you. and your resident so I want to kind of just briefly go into like, wow, like you are a powerhouse. Oh boy, I'm going to blush. You should, <laughs> you should feel so proud. And, and to, uh, to me, I always yeah. like to say I'm the online big sister. Mm. I am the social media online big that. sister. So in, in our culture, when I see someone thriving and yeah. challenging the status quo and just really disrupting the market that of, of the creations that you make, it just makes me so happy because oh, you. if you are what the younger generation is mm-hmm. going to be doing, then we're in good hands Total. Oh, right, thank you. Right? I that. and that's a big part of my why too right it's like that's that's one thing that I've like reflected on a lot and it's always kind of remained like static throughout the throughout the journey but like now more than ever I'm realizing the weight of being a role model and being okay with that and like accepting that right like sure I can sit here and be like oh I'm not none of these things but I am and I've worked hard for that and I'm willing to accept that role as a role model. Right. So, um, yeah, no, that means a lot to me, like for the why part of representing, you know, something not in the status quo and how that can help inspire other people. Like that's a big part. of Yeah. And I think whether you, you know, a lot of times when people start out on this journey with mm-hmm. the business, whether you like it or not, but the minute you put your business on social media, yeah. you're automatically somehow now a public figure, 100%. right? Yeah. Cause you've got almost what 40,000 followers yeah. now. That's a huge following. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's nuts. I never, you know, thought it would get to the point that it is. And like, I'm obviously always like dumbfounded and like, how does this happen? <laughs> like I was just making cakes from my mom's kitchen kind of thing. Right. <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. But yeah, it's like one percent every day, honestly. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. OK, so I want to get into a little bit about the roles and get sure. into like some questions. So roles, you're a baker, pastry chef, mm-hmm. cake artist, entrepreneur, and CEO of Just Cakes Bake Shop. Mm-hmm. Holy Hannah. Now yeah. your experience, you've baking for you've been baking for nearly 13 years, self-taught until 2016, and you attended a well-known pastry school in Paris. Mm-hmm. I had the name written down. I was like, I'm not even gonna try and Belle Concier. Okay. Yeah. So that's a well-known pastry. Yeah, it's chef. it's pretty pastry up school. there. It's taught by MOF. So what an F- MOF is, is like they're like a master of a certain sect of pastry. Like you'll have an MOF of bread making or MOF of chocolate or MOF, whatever. And to get that, like that is like, you're the top of the top. So I was taught by some incredible MOF certified chefs. Um, and, and yeah, and just being able to like soak that in and everything like that. So yeah. And sorry, what does Amazing. MOF stand for? Oh, it's something, oh, I'm going to butcher it. It's in okay. French. It's I'll, like I'll it something. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's like the top of the top. I should probably know that, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah. No, and was, how long were you there for? I was there for four months. So not okay. a long time. It was okay. like a semester, right? Mm-hmm. I still actually, I can still go back today and do a year a, a internship with the school with at a, at a patisserie or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So I, that's like, pe- like pending. I still really want to do that. Um, I don't get paid for it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like 12 hour days. And it's like mm-hmm. the true pastry chef experience in France. So I don't know if mm-hmm. I, uh, you're like, I'm already, you're like, I'm already you doing just, 12 hour days for my own enterprise. Literally, right, <laughs> yeah. literally. Right. But no, that would be a good experience or whatever else. So yeah, I still have that pending. I would love to do that one day. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's get into here some awards and recognitions. Holy oh, cow. I'm not going to go through all of them, but just some <laughs> no, of them No, I should go through yeah, go all of them. them. Okay. Yeah. Let's so, let everyone know. So Van Food Star's best, best cake challenge. You are winner of Food Network Canada's Big Bake Championship Halloween Edition. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have appeared on Food Network Canada as a judge on the Wall of Bakers. You were ne- recognized by the Surrey School, uh, Surrey, no, this is not the Surrey School, Surrey Board of Trades Top 
25 under 25. You were also recognized as a 30 under by 30 by BC Business in 2023. Mm -hmm. And you're also recognized as a young entrepreneur of the year. I can go on and on. And you, I know that your brownie won uh, a competition yeah. as well as being the best brownie. Uh, you've been featured in Surrey Fusion Festival, Richmond Food Festival, Home and Garden Show at the Vancouver Convention Center, mm -hmm. several other panels to baking and business. And you were nominated for a Women of the Distinction in BC Award. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, that's holy amazing. Holy. Okay. <laughs> I just want to let's back it up a little yeah, bit here sure. if we can here. Okay. So I read somewhere mm -hmm. that prior to your bake shop opening, you had started a small baking business at home to pay for your post-secondary education. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. So, I mean, I did get student loans out. My parents are incredibly supportive. They're such incredible individuals. Um, and they've always kind of been like, you know, like if you want something, you go for it, you get it yourself kind of thing and I even them being super supportive they helped me with the bills in terms of like rent and all that kind of stuff tuition has always been something like no you're gonna get a loan and you're gonna pay Good it off wow. so yeah so that's been a constant kind of thing throughout our, our entire family so I actually really appreciate that mm -hmm. because it does it when you're not handed something I think 100%. it's a little different the wow. way you approach it and how serious you are about it um yeah so that has been um yeah so then the business when I started it I it really kind of started to take off as like a full-fledged like side hustle in my second year of UBC so I saw some you know money coming in and that helped me pay for like gas and groceries and you know textbooks and tuition and all that kind of stuff and helped now like my loan is almost paid off so I'm like okay that's that's great and that I think the values that were instilled in me and the value of a dollar that was instilled in me through this and obviously countless other things that my parents had hands in, in terms of their parenting style, I think that has attributed to my success for sure. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Wow. And totally. When you have to pay for that course, you know that you can't flunk or fail exactly. that course, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. Yep. yeah. I had, you know, I not to my own horn, but like I had a really solid GPA at UBC at, in high school. I, I was a smart kid. I almost made it on the Dean's list. Like I was like, I really took school seriously while also doing, you know, my side hustle so yeah great and you yeah. just said something that we have championed on a previous episode not to toot your own horn uh -huh. we like to toot <laughs> to our own yeah. horn <laughs> toot, toot. okay you got <laughs> it. Toot toot for you. Sweet. yeah we're gonna toot for you. you okay so how did just cakes come about how yeah. did all that happen from the side hustle now it turned into a business oh my gosh so i'll backtrack a little bit i remember when i was doing it from home you know, my, my dad, he's an entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneur as well. So he saw me doing this and start, people started asking like my parents, like, Oh, well, Rav make a cake for my kid or whatever. Right. So he's like, we need to get you some business cards. So like, what do you want to name your business? <laughs> and I was like, well, I just make cakes. So let's we'll call it just cakes. And I made my logo and paint. Do you remember paint? Yeah. On the, <laughs> Microsoft yeah, Word yeah, paint. Microsoft <laughs> Word paint. So I made a logo on there and he took it and he got some business cards made like that day. And then he started like handing them out. So that's how the name came about. Um, and then Fast forward, that was when I was, yeah, 16. And then fast forward to when I was in UBC. In my first year, I lived in the dorms, no kitchens there. So that's when I really missed the kitchen. And um, at the time, I, I was super close with my, my BB. She lived with us. She helped raise me. And like the story goes, you know, when I, every single day from high school, when I would come home, bake something, make her jaw, and we, that would be our like time together, right? And then in first year, she got really sick. At the end of my first year, she actually ended up passing away way um and that like hit me really hard and then just like the the um sorry what was I gonna say and then in second year that kind of helped like motivate me to kind of get my own place or with a friend we rented a small apartment that had a kitchen and that was like so relieving for me like I still remember the first thing you know unpacking was my cake tools my cake pans all of that and I made a cake like within the first seven hours of me moving it <laughs> wow so that's a great that. it's like your therapy yeah, yeah. yeah it totally was yeah. it totally was and then um yeah and then that's kind of what really I was like wow I can actually do this even while going to school and I, at least I'll have my therapy or at least I'll have my outlet so that's then over the years I gained my confidence you know really found who I was or worked on that and then started networking more at the university did a lot of like social like um, clubs and stuff on campus uh, I then ended up being co-president of the UBC Punga Club and that really helped me in the South Asian wedding industry um, I did a lot of bake sales on campus 
this. The, that's how the cake jar came about. My first cake jar. I have a picture of it. Actually, maybe I'll send it to you guys. Um, I gave it to my best friend and uh, that kind of started wow. the cake jar thing. Um, yeah. So you, UBC was a special place for making my business like kind of legitimate um, and networking me or connecting me with cool people that helped me get into the wedding industry. And then from there, uh, that's when I went to Paris and the rest is just amazing. So yeah. you, if you wow. don't mind me asking, what yeah. were you taking at UBC and like, what made you start saying, I want to go into like the baking? Obviously you had the yeah. passion for it, but what made you say, okay, what am I taking at UBC? And I'm going to totally. go this way. That's a great question. So I was in psychology. I actually, so backtracking even more, I got bullied a little bit as a kid. I felt really insecure. I felt I had a lot of like depressive thoughts at a, at a very young age and I wanted to help that. So I was, I kind of gravitated towards a feel of like psychology and counseling. So that was what my degree was in all the while I'm doing the side hustle and fourth year comes. And obviously everyone's asking like, what are you going to do after UBC or whatever? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, on one end, you know, you could go the professional route and have like a, a good stable job career, their linear path. And then, or I could go for my hobby, basically start from scratch and like, you know, do something not status quo. Um, and I really like struggled with that. Whereas like, and I feel like that was more of an internal struggle because on the outside, like my, my immediate family is like, do what makes you happy. Right. Like you got your education, you, whatever you can, you always have a plan B. If you want right. to go for it, go for it. So that's kind of why I decided is to, to go for it. Right. And that kind of prompted the going to Paris and coming back and yeah. Did you go to Paris history. alone? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Wow. And that is something that I look back and I'm like, damn, I had balls. Yeah. Because, <laughs> Cause now I was what? 21. Wow. 20 or 21. Yeah. 20. I think it's 20, 21, 21. I was 21 and I didn't speak the language. And I just like, I, I inquired with the school in November of 2015 and they got back to me saying they'll have room in 2017. So in my head, I'm like, I got time to save up and like, whatever, figure it out. Then a couple of weeks go by and then they call me. They're like, we have another spot or someone dropped out. Do you want it? But we need your like tuition money like now. Right. So that was at like, it was late in the night because of the time zone. I remember that. And then the next morning at like 9am TD opened at 9am and I was there. I emptied my bank account, wired it. And then I came home. My mom's making bronte and I was like, mom, I'm going to Paris. And she's like, oh, all right. Sounds wow. Great. I yeah. love how supportive your parents oh, yeah. are. Super, That's super, amazing. Super, super supportive. Especially I've for been, South Asian. I've been talking about it at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Like I was like, mom, I really want to go. I really want to go. And like my mom and dad were like, well, why don't we do like a trip out of it? And like, we stay for a couple of weeks and you can take like a week course or something like that. Like that was kind of what we were talking about just in passing, right? Nothing serious. And then, then I just kind of pulled the trigger and I, I was such an introverted kid at that point. Like I didn't talk like I was so to myself I was not the person that I am now um I I didn't know how to like present myself or whatever else I was really shy I was like I now I think about it now I'm like how the heck like did I do right. that you know um but yeah it, it was definitely a very courageous step and I'm proud of you know 21 year old Rav for doing yeah. that because I don't think I would be who I am today if I didn't yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting that you say that you're shy and you're introvert because your social reels are anything but yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what we fall in love with. Yeah. Your personality yeah. is that you're so vivacious, so bubbly, so oh, authentic, and so real. And yeah. I look forward to your reels. I don't know. You probably see the chart. We like oh, every single so thing that you do. <laughs> that so and so that's uh, interesting that you say that. Yeah. So where do you think? When mm -hmm. do you think that shyness left? And how did you find your beat and your groove? Yeah. You know what? I think it's just when I realized I didn't have to be anyone but me, mm -hmm. that helped me so much. Like, I don't need to put a face on. I don't need to be fake. I can just say whatever. Like, I'm going to mess up. It's fine. I'm, I am truly me. And I am actually very proud of that about myself is I'm the same person here that I am on social media. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very proud of that because I know how hard that is. And I know how hard it is. Like you cannot fake it. Like you literally can't, it's either you're authentic or you're not. And I feel like I've, I've done the work to be authentic and be happy with who I am that I'm able to do that. So, yeah.
That's amazing. Wow. Well, you can tell your, your energy yeah. on your social channels. And even when we come into the bake shop, your energy is very contagious uh, yeah. and it transcends. Like even when you, you came, you know, for the recording today and we're talking, there's something magnetic about you. Oh, thank and you. I think, um, there's, uh, that's a quality that I, I've always looked up and I've admired that about you. So, that's really sweet. um, thank you've you. got some sort of a superpower lady. Yeah. Well, and I think I want to test it. I think <laughs> if you really do pursue your passion, cause it seems like this baking was your passion, totally, yeah. the counseling and the psychology was more let me understand what's happened to me True. and I think you following your passion mm-hmm. which hopefully a lot of viewers will see is that it does change your energy totally. and you do radiate and I feel that same way with us because yeah. before the podcast I mean our vibration was a little lower we would yeah. say mm-hmm. and we're radiating lower. a little differently now oh, that we amazing. are chasing our passion as well I think when you realize like it's it's not about the numbers and not right. about the paycheck or whatever like sure that's all going to come as a byproduct yeah eventually you'd hope but like if that's the main reason you're doing something it, it sometimes it just doesn't translate as well right or it's not as long-lived so I think when you're truly doing something out of passion out of genuine interest and love for it like it that's what promotes the longevity as well so, yeah. Yeah, it feels right, right? It feels you know right. that you exactly. just know that okay, I this yeah. feels right. Like I'm putting my energy into the right totally. places. And like how Adj was saying that, like how it, your energy is so great. There's been so many times when you were first starting up and Adj had seen you before because she would go usually get the desserts. And then a few times I had gone in and you were helping me and I didn't know that you were the owner. Yeah. So I was just like, Oh yeah, it was great service. I went there. Well, like, oh, have you ever met the, the, the owner? I was like, No, I've never met her. I've, I've, I've been there so many times. They're like, it's Ravina. And then she showed I was like, Hey, that I just Aww. saw when I left. I was like, I had no idea. You know, in the South Asian community, usually when you go to business and the, you meet the owner, you know they're the owner because they have that mm. ego about yeah. them. They let you know that I'm the owner of this place. And I didn't get any of that. I was just like, oh, I'm she's glad. helping me as I got and I left. And then I figured out after, oh, that was the owner. Of, I'm glad. Oh my gosh, she had really That's good awesome. energy. She was super, super chill. That's yeah. sweet. Thanks, yeah. guys. Your, your energy in, in your shops, in both yeah. locations. Yeah. I'm biased. I always come to the Scott Road yeah. one because I know you're there. Yeah. And it's, also, <laughs> it's also close to my parents' place. Yeah. I do like the Cloverdale. I mean, Cloverdale is closer for me. Yeah. But I come there just because it's like, I feel like I get a dose of Ravina. Oh, and I get my treat eats and I'm on my day and it's yeah. just like I, I you know you kind of exude that that yeah. level of when you're coming in here you're you're creating that experience for your customers Good, I'm glad that's the goal I mean I know we still got you know a long way to go there's a lot of vision that we have for like to make it even better and better like we really want to convert it into like a sit-down cafe where like you can mm-hmm. actually like come and have mm-hmm. an experience so mm-hmm. I'm glad that you said that because like yeah that's definitely like our 2024 goal oh amazing to do that. yeah I totally. think we're picking up yeah, on the yeah. Vibes yeah. Here. I love that yeah. that's yeah. Yeah. I know. We're going to eliminate all the brides yeah. coming in for just cakes. We're going to make it single people can come to and an experience yeah. in a cafe. What I find funny is uh, if I add up now, how much time we spend uh, thinking about, so make sure you get to the place before 12 o'clock. Yeah. This time. And, and then we'll go oh there and see a long God. lineup. And I just look, I'm like, these are the trials and tribulations of success. I was like, <laughs> yeah. when you're doing something right, yeah. you have this many people. Oh, we'll get there. But like, make sure you get it this time. Okay, you have to coordinate. And we yeah. think like, look how much time we spend coordinating. <laughs> to get our yeah. You have to back it up for our listeners and our <laughs> audience. So for those of you that live in the metro Vancouver area and that have come to Just Cakes, you will know this. When she, she used to open at noon and mm-hmm. now the hours are 11 a.m. This this lady has a lineup, okay? Um, I've never seen yeah. a lineup yeah. here. Uh, and so for those of you that are going to be coming to visit Vancouver, Y'all better come to Just Cakes Bake Shop. But she has a lineup, yeah. and you have to get there's a sweet spot before yeah. Yeah. everyone else lines up. Yeah. And I think no, even make- when you get there early, because yeah. I drove, yes. I live in Washington, oh, and I crossed the border, came first thing in the morning. I was like, for the love of God, nobody <laughs> yeah. has a life here. Why are you all waiting outside? Every time I go there, I'm waiting outside. Every time I go, there, there, I, time I go there, I have like this flashback of the episode of Friends when yeah. uh, Monica was making candy for yeah. her neighbors, <laughs> yeah. and there's like a people outside. And I was the guy. I was like, we want more candy. <laughs> Lady. That's so funny. Um, actually, I'll give a I'll give a, a hack. Come on, a, if you come on a weekday, like on Wednesdays and Thursdays, those are the sweet spots. Oh. We're not busy uh, on oh, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Okay. Tuesday, we're busy because we're closed on the Monday, so people need their fix. Mm. <laughs> so everyone comes Tuesday. Yeah. Then Wednesday, Thursday, we're kind of de- a little dead. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday is when we have like a, okay. a little bit of a lineup. But 
Around two o'clock, the lines kind of die. We still have stuff. So mm -hmm. there's your hack. And I actually have a question because I yeah. do like that. You're closed Sunday and Monday, right? We're closed just Monday. Okay, just Monday. Yeah. What was the rationale behind the Monday closing? Because a lot of bakeries are closed on Mondays. Oh, okay. And I just want my team to have some you time Have some time off. off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, great. Totally. Yeah. Like even, yeah, like I, I'm very much about like ethical employment, ethical wages and stuff like that. And the food and hospitality industry gets a very bad rap for that. So I was like, this is my chance to change it at least even if it's small scale, like just in my little community, I'm happy to, you know, do things a little differently. So, yeah, because like a lot of my staff have been there since, you know, year one, two, three, and they're still there and they wow. don't want to leave because we do promote, a, you know, healthy balance. There's obviously going to be really like busy times where I do expect more, but we do be, but we, we are very flexible with our team. Like if you need two weeks off, okay, let's figure it out. Like yeah. how do we give you two weeks off or whatever? Right. So I think that's what kind of sets me apart from other places. Sure. It may cut into my bottom line, but I don't really care. Mm -hmm. Like, because I want to make sure my team is taken care of because they they're taking care of me. Right. So, and I really want to promote other business owners to think like that because like yes. you are nothing yes. without, without your employees. Yeah. All right. Be, yeah. Yeah. CEO, yeah. Honestly, listen to this. That's amazing that you understand mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. the need for workplace culture totally. imbalance, totally. especially at, at times we are where everything is going up and wages yeah. are staying stagnant. So yeah. if you're an employer that understands that and totally. says, okay, whatever I can do within my means, I will do that. Right. So, for sure. And that probably Definitely. makes sense why you have team members that are still with you and yeah. right. stick around. Around. And then I think one other thing that like uh, I talk to other business owners are like, we can't believe you do this. I'm like, I share my numbers with my team on a weekly basis. Wow. You know exactly what I'm making. You know exactly what's going out and how do we make it even better so I can give you that raise or if I can give you full mm. benefits or if I can give you that. Like my full time staff, they all have full benefits. And Brilliant. that is unheard of in yeah. bakeries <laughs> or a small business. So I'm like, no, that is worth it for me. Right. Um, to get to that point or whatever else. But like uh, because I'm so transparent like they know like you can go I don't care like go ahead and and check you can go ahead and see what I make or what your other man manager makes like we're very much about transparency wow. um and and I I don't feel like I have to hide anything yeah I mm -hmm. um I really value your transparency mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why we know that the cost of goods have gone yeah. up yeah. and your stories and your posts when you're authentic and you say guys I'm really sorry but the cost of flour and sugar yeah. has gone up I'm upping my price by a quarter certain goods are going to be affected but yeah. I as a consumer really appreciate yeah. that Good. 100% and we saw that level of transparency mm -hmm. and authenticity totally. from you and because a lot of businesses do hike their prices yeah. but we never really know why yeah, exactly. and for yeah. you for a small business it affect all of these things affect your bottom totally. line Totally, definitely. And the fact that you're just saying it at, like like as it is, yeah. I think that is going to be the uh, secret to your success. No, longevity. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. And I yeah. think as a conscious consumer and just your parents right. or small business owners too, yeah. you will appreciate it. if the cost has gone up a little bit, but you know, you're spending it to help promote, promote a small business. Yeah. You're okay with that. And especially if you're also notifying your customers yes. saying, Hey, True. we're raising it because of yeah. look, the costs are yeah. totally understandable. It's when you go to sometimes big companies and their costs mm. are outrageous and you know that they pay their employees next to nothing and mm. they're just gouging people that leaves a sour yeah, taste in people's mouth. Definitely. But when you go there, the quality that you get and you're still like, Oh, these prices are still good for the yeah, quality I'm totally. getting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get into here. Here, I want to talk about here your recognition and your accolades here. Yeah. Holy <laughs> Hannah, you are this little powerhouse. You've got Thank so you. much going on. Yeah. How does all this recognition and notoriety feel? Like in 2023, yeah. you were recognized as a 30 under 30 by BC Business. That was like, a crazy one for me because it's been on my vision board for like the last two, three years. Yeah. Wow. So it's been, that was like, that one hit me hard. And I was like, that is something, I know it's just a, a title, but at, even at this moment, like the, the opportunity, just that title has brought me does bear weight. And I've met mm -hmm. some incredible people. It's allowed me to work on other projects. So like, I, I really, really hold that one dear as like a real, as a true accomplishment that I'm so, so proud of. Um, so yeah, that one was a cool one for sure. That's amazing. Yeah. And I also want to talk about, so you are also known for creating Canada's first cake jar. Yeah. Cake, cake jar, jar vending machine. Right. Yeah. Uh, the jar bar. Yeah. Let's, how did this idea come to be? Yeah. So I started to do like cake in a jar in 2014. Um, I did it a couple of times at UBC and then the first, sorry, the first time I made it, my, so my mom, where I'm from Abbotsford. So I live on a blueberry farm. My parents do. And my mom was making blueberry 
blueberry jam one day. So she puts them in mason jars. And then so she was making jam. I'm making a wedding cake. And that wedding cake was like lemon cake with something in it, right? So I had lemon crumbs left from like cake crumbs or cake scraps. Um, so I took some of the mason jars. I crumbled it up. I saw it on Pinterest, the cake in a jar idea. And then I took some of my mom's jam, some buttercream and put it in a jar and I put it on my Instagram. And then within minutes, someone's like, can I buy this? And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So then yeah. week after I made a couple other flavors, I made a couple dozen and within 10 minutes completely sold. And wow. I'm like, okay, this could be a thing. Then I started doing pre-orders. So I would take like 300 or 400 jars at a time. I started working on my packaging a little bit better and then those would sell out in like 20 minutes. I'm like, how the heck am I supposed to keep up? Um, and then that within just, I think it was two months after I started making cake jars or was it? Yeah. Two months after I started making cake jars, like as like a pre-order thing, um, tasty Indian bistro reached out to me. They're like, can you please make this for our menu? And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> good. Yeah. So did all the contract, did all the, you know, necessary things. And we got on the menu to this day. We are still on the menu. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's huge when tasty. Yeah. 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 I think They're for, such a well-known. Yeah, their, right. their quality level is totally, level. totally. So that like also obviously was super validating as well. Um, and then from then that was, you know, when that was uh, 2014 and then into 2015. Um, and then I still, still kept on doing the pre-orders. And I remember when one of, my most successful pre-orders, I think I made like $2,000 or something. And it was all cash. People paid in cash, right? <laughs> and then so I, I remember going to Maple Food Equipment in Maple Ridge and I bought my first commercial oven with $2,000. Wow. And, <laughs> and, and now they're the same company that is helping me with the equipment for my warehouse. So, wow. and they are like, wow, that was, it's been such a cool full circle journey. That's and awesome. I like this community again, like I, I harp on it so much. It's so amazing. And like, it's really amazing to see because we hear a lot about the, the, uh, the flip side, right. Of South Asians against South Asians right. and whatever mm -hmm. else. But there is that community within our community that is so supportive and so happy to see us succeed. And let's focus on that versus like versus the cattiness and versus the, the competition. Darkness. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's been really cool, too. Okay. And yeah, sorry. No, go on. We, uh, we got another one. Yeah. You're also the winner of the Big Bake Show yeah. on Canada's New, uh, Canada's New Network cool. Halloween edition. Yeah. And you're also a judge on Food Network's Wall of Bakers. Yeah. Let's talk about how did the Halloween edition <laughs> and all that come to be? Okay. And so, then how did it allude into the Wall of Bakers eventually? Yeah, pretty crazy. So again, so Wall of, uh, sorry, uh, Big Bake was in 2019. So I, and I got reached out to for the opportunity in like spring of 2019, but in January, I put it on my vision board. I put Food Network Canada Whoa. logo on my vision board. Whoa. And uh, I was like, you know what? It'd be cool to do some TV. And then in March, they reached out to me. A producer found me on, on Instagram. They DM me. They're like, hey, just letting you know, you have a cool profile. Here's an application link. Like, it was just a public application link. Um, but then we signed up and then we got through to like an initial interview, me and my team. And then so we did the interview. We thought it went well, but we didn't hear back. So we're like, okay, um, that's fine. That's okay. And then a couple of weeks go by and they're like, hey, you got the spot. And I was like, excuse me. I remember it was like late night at the bakery and I just screamed. I like got the email. I screamed and I called, you know, my now husband and it was wild. Um, and then so we were supposed to film just a. Yeah. So sorry, we got the initial thing in March and then we got confirmation that we were going to be in the show on in May and we were supposed to uh, film three weeks after that. And we still had to do a plan and a sketch and all that kind of stuff, all the behind the scenes stuff. And I was like, what is happening? So that was super like daunting, but so exciting. And then, so we go out, we fly out. We're the underdog because the fly other, out, where did you fly out to Toronto? Okay. So we're the underdog because the other two comp competing teams were previous winners of other shows. So we're like, oh, we don't know what we're doing. And we had to build a structure. So like screwdrivers and stuff. I'm like, I don't know how to use this drill. Like, what the heck? <laughs> um, thankfully, they helped us. But anyway, so we did that. We, we were the second episode to film of that season and they hadn't figured out their kitchen yet. So it was crazy hot, like 30 degrees plus. So our cake, all of our cakes were melting. So we basically had to work out in the walk-in coolers the entire time. Oh, it was a shit show. It was such a mess. <laughs> it was 
such a mess. But then what me and my team kind of went into it. We're like, all we want is a finished product. We're going to do our best. And that's okay. Just have fun. So we didn't like think we were going to win or anything, but we did end up winning. And that really helped with the momentum yeah. of the business and all that kind of stuff. And also just further validation. Like, okay, I'm not just some girl that makes some cakes from home or whatever. Like I, I do have what it takes. So that was really nice for me. Um, and then from there, like you, you kind of get into like the food network wheelhouse then. Right. So they'll send you more applications or whatever else to be in other shows. If you're eligible, um, fun fact about food network. If you're on a show, you can't be on another show for a full year oh, or something like oh. that. Um, so yeah. So after the year then, um, so that was, that aired in 2019. And then I was reached out to again in 2021. I thought it was a, a spam email and they're <laughs> like, Hey, we're so-and-so from food network Canada. And we would love to see if Ravina would like to be, um, uh, have a judge position. And I was like, this is not real. <laughs> and then they called me, they found my personal number and they're like, no, 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 this is real. And they're like, would you be down for an interview to see if, you know, if or would, or would you apply? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I did it. And then I, I got the call back like a day after saying, yeah, we would want you on the show. And then, so I did half a season, uh, which is really cool. I was the youngest judge and that was really awesome. Again, further validating, like, okay, I'm a judge. Like, yeah, that's wild. Wow. Um, and just going back to like, I watched these shows growing up. I was obsessed with them. I was, I never saw someone that looked like me on them. And now to mm -hmm. be that person is like pretty special. I'm very much about representation on a larger scale. So that was really cool. Um, yeah. And then got to do that. I filmed that 10 days after my wedding. Wow. Yeah. In the, wow. yeah. Oh. In the first, you'll see my Judah in some, in some <laughs> oh like, little bits of it, oh. and then you'll see my Mendy too in Amazing. some in some shots. Yeah, wow, I know. Yeah, so I, yeah, that was wild. I mean, kudos. Oh, to I my, think that deserves a round of applause. Just thank for you. How does your, I mean, I know he was your boyfriend, fiance, yeah. husband now. How yeah. does he feel about this? Because yeah. he has to juggle all these things with you. Totally. Right? Yeah. I, I think that's like such an unspoken thing of how to be the partner of an entrepreneur. Yes. Because I was very forthcoming in the beginning of our relationship. Like, look, my business is my priority. I love you, but there will be times where I sacrifice a relationship for wow. our business. So I have been very forthright with that. And he's been understanding and he's been so incredible. And now he's my CFO. So now wow. he works. Business. That's awesome. But it's cool. It's cool building something with your partner, right? Yeah. Like I, I I love it. Like honestly, I think I appreciate him more and more every single day. Like in terms of he's willing to really, you know, sacrifice what he loves and stuff for being a part of the business. And now just fall watching him fall in love with that is really cool for me too. Um, so it's it's really cool. It's inspiring awesome. too yeah. for a lot yeah. of women to think that, you know, they have to do this on their own. No, you um, don't. And yeah, yeah, you can have a partner who will support. Oh, uh, for sure. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think that's really big on like, you know, that kind of balance of masculine and feminine energy yeah. is like people often like look at me and my role and they're like, you're very in your masculine. And I was like, I would actually counter that. Like, I, I think I have a good balance now. Like I know when to be in my feminine and when to be in my masculine. And I think that's why my relationship works so well. And then same with my husband, right? He knows when he needs to let me shine and he knows when he needs to be the, you know, step up and, and, and do what he needs to do. And I don't think I would be at the level I am of my business if it wasn't for him like even just on the level of support and the level of like letting me do me when I need to and letting him do him when he needs to it's as simple as that it really is um and I just think in today's like day and age I think we overthink a lot of things and I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves right like yeah. you can you can ask for help Right. That's yeah. awesome. Well, yeah. shout out yeah. to Ravina's husband yeah. for being very supportive. Oh, shout out okay. to Ravina's husband. Are you, are you okay yeah. to say your husband's name? Yeah, his name's Arjun. Oh, yeah. Arjun. Yeah. Arjun. Yeah. Oh, we have a mama that we love that oh, has the same name. Awesome. Arjun. Arjun. Arjun's yeah. are good people. They're good. Yeah. Yeah. They're good, good job. Job. Oh, Arjun. Good yeah. Amazing. Mr. JCB. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Now, if we can pivot a little bit without mm. kind of going a little like somber or sad, but yeah. it is, uh, it's something that uh, I read uh, and I know that we briefly spoke about as well. And I feel that connection to you. So, you know, 
there's a period in your life that was difficult when you're, you know, in your youth yeah. and you experienced some bullying and then yeah. we touched about it a little earlier. Do you mind yeah. talking a little bit about it? Cause sure. I can relate cause I experienced totally. bullying twice in elementary and then in high school. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was on the outside looking in, it looked like I had a lot of friends. I looked like I was happy, straight A student, all that. But I was, I felt so alone. Like I was purposely left out of like parties or purposely kind of like, we're just not going to call Rab today. Like in front of me, making fun of my acne, making fun of my weight, you know, boys making fun of, you know, the way I looked, all that kind of stuff. And like, so you just like internalize that. And I'm sure, like I look back at it now, I'm like, oh, it wasn't such a big deal. But I'm like, at that time, it was so big for me. And, you know, you internalize it. And then that morphed into like really dark thoughts, thoughts of like, do I even want to live anymore? And like acting on that and everything like that. Like I'm very candid about, you know, you know, attempted suicide and, and like I used to self mutilate a lot. So I know that's a, you don't have to leave that in if it's too triggering. Um, but yeah, like I, I did that straight for almost two years and before I told, you know, my family. Um, so that was really hard for me. Like just like letting those dark thoughts like consume me, but the kitchen was the thing that helped me out of it. So that's why I think maybe also I feel so strongly to that. And I, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional, but, um, like even now that I think about back to the why is like, I am doing this for the person that I never thought I could be, you know, Mm -hmm. or I never thought I would have this life because I was at such a dark place. So that's been so liberating for me to realize and you know and just be proud of myself isn't it it kind of um uh, a sweet spot for you now Mm -hmm. i mean because when you're in that darkness and Mm -hmm. i know i can relate you can't see the light no you you can't see how like there's going to be brighter days and you're struggling right i was like similar to you i was on student council i thought i had friends i wouldn't get the invites and you're like what's going on and then the bullying happened i still have a scar from my bullying i don't know if you can see i was like smashed against well this is the first time i'm seeing it against a car my sister was there and worst day for me too and i didn't realize up till a couple i think a year ago when i was uh, doing um PRP and microneedling yeah. and my uh, microneedling lady said you have a scar or something here and I had forgotten when I looked and I'm like wow. and then I had the flashback of the little girl's head being smashed against a car and I'm like as she's do you want me to touch that spot I said no that's my story I want you to leave oh, that wow. because see now I'm getting emotional yeah. because that's the little girl that went through pain that is going to manifest 100%. and rise like you know when the phoenix 100%. rise right yeah and so I can connect to you with that but what I wanted to ask you is for me I know that my bullying, uh, mm. I'm in my 40s now, so mm. it's 100% affected my relationships mm. as I've gotten older mm. and through adult. Has that uh, has definitely affected you? In oh, your adult? 100%. I never thought I was worthy of like having friends because I'm like, there must be something wrong with me. Wow. Right? Or like, I never thought I was worthy of having the relationship I have now because I'm like, no, no I'll be too much. Or like, I'm, uh, it's, I'm just too much. I must be just too much. So like, I was okay not having good friends for a long, or I thought I was okay of not having friends for so long, right? And like now in my adulthood, I'm like, no, I deserve good friends. And like, dude, it, it came to the point and I realized this now. I'm like, I would not call my friends if I needed help because I'm like, no, 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 I'm just going to bother them and I'm going to be too much and they're going to hate me for it. So I'm just not going to tell anybody what's going on. You know, that was like my mindset up until like, I could say like a year and a half ago. And now I feel like I have such a good group of friends that have like been like, Rab, you can call us whenever we will do anything for you because you will do the same for us. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So that that's been hugely like liberating for me, too. And just learning that, like, I am worthy of love and it's okay. Yeah. And so, so our viewers know, how do you change that narrative? Because I've struggled with that narrative. I know Angie struggled with that narrative. It's one of those things where years of counseling is what's helping me get mm-hmm. out of it. But how do you come to that place? Cause you're still really young and it's beautiful to see that at mm-hmm. such a young age that you're able to, to, you know, turn the story around yeah. and change your narrative. How does that happen? Cause I know, I know some people always think it's like a, uh, huh, Oprah moment. Yeah. It's not, right. It's, it's not, yeah. no, it's been years of work and I'm still not hundred percent there. I still have times where I'm like, Oh yeah, I can call this person or I can reach out. Right. Um, I think for me, it's just been like kind of, talking myself up like you are a good friend you know you're you know this is evidence right 
you know, you're a good friend to the people that you love and you're worthy of having good friends too. And just allowing yourself to have that experience. Right. I had an experience not too long ago where like a friend, she's been in my life for years, but like I was really vulnerable with her and then she was vulnerable back. And that just helped like, you know, our bond and like allow yourself to be vulnerable. Right. I know that's so scary, but like, if you do feel kind of that initial like friendship or connection with someone, like just let yourself kind of take it there. Right. Or see, see how that's going to go. Cause how else are you going to know if, you know, this person is going to be your friend or someone substantial in your life. So, yeah. And just knowing that you're, you're so worthy of it. Right. Yeah. Everyone has their that's, people. That's such a great point yeah. that you made. Um, mm-hmm. I just connected with you on something. Cause you said mm-hmm. that uh, when it came to your friend, friends a year and a half ago, you know, you're understanding the dynamics. I still struggle with that. Mm-hmm. I didn't have friends for the longest time. Yeah. My friends were my cousins well, yeah, cause I've yeah, got so same. many cousins yeah. and I didn't know how to be friends because I always have issues with trust. Yep. Uh, and the bullying has affected all my relationships totally. where same thing. I didn't feel good enough or I didn't trust girls. I didn't trust their intentions. Yep. And so I just stayed away. So I lost friendships. Yeah. I lost, uh, you know, just on getting to know people. I um, earlier this year, I had a colleague of mine that called Jake Kayla that passed mm-hmm. away mm-hmm. and I was uh, affiliated with her earlier on in my thirties. Yeah. And she was such a trailblazer and champion for women mm-hmm. and women are South Asian culture. And I was like, damn, I could have gone on these amazing trips, but my yeah. own insecurities yeah. Yeah. didn't allow me to form a friendship with her. Totally. One of my biggest regrets. And wow. now in my forties, I'm learning you know, I've got now I'm like my, I have shout out to my girlfriends. They know who they are mm. that are now showing me what, what it means to be yeah. good friends and mm-hmm. be cheerleaders mm-hmm. and lift you up. 100%. And here I am now like, damn, I'm still figuring out how to learn to love and then figuring out yeah. friends, but yeah. it's better late than never. hundred right? percent. Right. Um, that reminds me of like one conversation I had with, uh, so my husband and his group of friends and they're all married. So the, the wives group, we call ourselves. Right. And I think one day I was just like, just sitting on my own and I got emotional thinking about them because like this is what I've craved like this group of like sisterhood right and like I literally just sent in a whatsapp chat like I don't think like I need to like express how grateful I am for this group because I've never felt so connected with a group of women before and like it's on a different level because we're on like a similar stage of life we're all able to talk about these things and I'm like this is so special to me and like I can't really put it in words but like again it's that vulnerability piece and allowing yourself to to do that because I, I relate with you on that, like not wanting to reach out and like, oh, they don't want me on this trip or like, you know, I'm just not going to do this because what if they don't like me and all that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, you, you got to challenge that for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, do you have siblings? I do. Two you sisters. Do? Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're we're we're great friends. Yeah. <laughs> and where do you rank in this? I'm the eldest. Oh, you're all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you wish you had an older sister sometime? Well, so my Thaya's kids, uh, he has two sons. They're like my older brother. So when it, I consider the five of us, mm-hmm. I'm the middle. Oh, so it's interesting, but I, I do relate to more the being the eldest for sure. Yeah. I get tired yeah. of sometimes being the big sister. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I just wish I had a sister. Oh my too. gosh, the people pleasing. Oh, it's the next oh. level. <laughs> and always make, and I don't know if you're like me, I'm always like that military sister that yeah. feels like, make sure she's okay. Mm. Make sure she's okay. Make sure everybody's okay. Yeah. You just take on that role of big totally. sister, especially in our culture, to yeah. be the glue and champion for, sure. for family and make sure that, you know, you are like that parental figure. For sure, definitely. Like, I think my parents have seen me more as a friend versus a daughter since wow. I turned like 17, 18. Wow. Yeah. Since I, I moved out when I was 17 to go to UBC. So then, um, yeah. So since then, they have more so treated me as a friend than a daughter. That's some wow. very forward very, thinking. Very parents. Forward. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Three, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they're, they talk to me about like, I also, I, I understand my privilege in terms of like, my dad spoke finances with me at 12 and like, you know, how business works and all this kind of stuff. Like I did have those conversations and they're incredible parents in the sense of like their openness. Um, but yeah, they definitely, you know, they, they take my advice or like they listen to my opinion and things like that. Wow. So they very, very much value that. Like I'm the mediator in the family. Like when wow. my parents are fighting, I, oh, yeah, oh, me. I, fight. yeah. <laughs> I can relate. Yeah, I can, totally. Oh yeah. my gosh. It's We're the so peacemaker, funny. right? We are the peacemaker. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, totally. That's amazing. Now for anyone that's, let's say interested in, in whether they want to start a, for a budding baker, yeah. any, any, you know, any line of work that they're interested in, what is your advice to mm-hmm. them? Um, so this may be a little controversial, but 
as I mentioned, like Nipsey and Kobe, very huge, you know, um, role models in my life. You need to get to almost a level of like delusion and obsessiveness with your craft. It's like practice, like honestly practice, like talent will only bring you so far practice every single day, whether it's, you know, if you want to be an athlete, like be how, how much do you need to train? or whatever else, like push that edge, push your edge, because that's what's going to take you to the next level. That's what's going to set you apart. I know how much work I'm willing to put in. I know that I'm going to work harder than I worked yesterday. And that what I worked yesterday was insane. Like I, I, I know my capability, right? Like in terms of you, like literally the quote, the only person you should try to be better than is a person you were yesterday. That's yeah. literally it. It's a 1% every day. Don't focus on anyone else. Be obsessed with your craft. That's amazing. That's our motto, actually. Yeah. yeah. Is, uh, to be better yeah. than because we do stupid shit all the time. Yeah. Like yesterday, I'm like, oh damn, I was like not a good version of Ant. Mm. Okay, but I'm gonna change it yeah. up today, 100%. right? So it's constant work. Yeah, constant, constant. Okay, where do you, where do you find the time? What does Ravina like to do on our off days? Mm. You know, on the Mondays or you know what your yeah. work life and balance. How do you juggle it? So all? I'm I'm working on this because like I almost feel actually my husband said this to me. He's like every time you get to a good place and you're taking care of yourself, you just put something else on your. <laughs> on your <laughs> like I was honestly, like I say this all the time, if I didn't get the production facility, I would have like a two, three day week right now. And I would have like really good balance, but I'm like, that's not me. Excuse me. <laughs> and then, so yeah, now with the warehouse, I am working a lot, but I'm getting to the point where like, okay, we're almost there. Um, but what I like to do in my days off. Um, so I live in Vancouver, not too far from downtown. And then, so I usually like for the past like two weeks, I've just like shut my phone off. I go visit like two or three bakeries. I like take myself out. I got a massage randomly one day. I got my nails done randomly one day got my hair done you know just like self-care yeah. and all that kind of stuff um i'm not much of a shopper i'm more of an experienced person so like i like to go to a cafe and like sit there and like you know like people watch and all that kind of <laughs> stuff just yeah. 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 Just imagine what their life is yeah. and make yeah. up a story in yeah. my head it's that, like, okay, yeah. Yeah. we have yeah. one of those on our panel yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's me i love yeah. doing that yeah. so yeah and then i just like um I'm, i don't watch a lot of tv I don't watch a lot of movies. I, I've just never been into it. Uh, I do watch, actually, I will admit, I watch like trash TV if I ever watch TV. <laughs> Love is blind right now. <laughs> That's you watch, it. Do you watch any of the Real Housewives? No. Oh, okay. I tried to get into it. I tried to get into Vanderpump. I just can't. <laughs> uh, I just can't. But um, Love is Blind is, is my kryptonite. Vanderpump is my guilty know. pleasure. Really? I watched season it's one so and terrible. then after that, I was like, I can't do it yeah. anymore. Our go-to yeah. thing is Jersey Shore. Jersey yeah. Shore. Yeah. 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 I've saved it. We haven't watched the latest yet, oh, so oh, I, was like, I, I don't watch it on my own. I'll wait till she comes over so around the funny. same level and she'll come by. Oh like, my god, that's crazy that you're yeah, yeah. so angry. Yeah. Well, that's that's just like gonna waste like two hours. That's our guilty pleasure. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you grew is, up watching them. Yeah, right? We saw them for yeah. ten years, and they're still like a family. Yeah, it's just you connect with it. You're 100%. like, look what they did. They turned their like nothing into something, into and they, something. Yeah, and they were having a good time. For sure. Imagine if you got paid to go and have a vacation with your friends. That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, that's so funny that you say that because Arjun. One of his favorite <laughs> <laughs> shows is also Jersey Shore. Oh man, I'd like to you meet him. Nipsey, you Jersey to, you Shore. Need to meet him, honestly. What's next? He's your CFO. Uh, he's we really CFO. like him already. Yeah. Yeah. He, might, he might do our books. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, honestly, maybe down. But um, yeah, yeah. Should I try. Okay, what else? What else do I like to do? Um, I, I used to figure skate, so that's oh, a fun fact. Oh about wow. Me. So I like to sometimes just like I have my skates always with me in the in my van. Um, um, and then I just go to an arena and I skate. That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. I had a whole list of questions on yeah. here as well, but uh, I'm going to get to a couple of the ones that are rapid are, fire. Yeah. <laughs> rapid, yeah we should, okay. Let's, let's do a little bit of rapid sure. fire. Okay. What is the best baking utensil Ooh. that you love using? Oh, my scraper, my metal scraper. Okay. And what's yeah. the most useless one? Useless? That is such a good question. Oh, I need to I got gotcha. you. I know. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have something in mind, but then I can't think about it right now. Okay, let's go. Okay, okay, I got one for you. What's your favorite dessert? Cheesecake. Oh, oh wow. strawberry or cherry? Ah, uh, strawberry. Yeah, mm, that's yeah. ours yeah. too. Strawberry or raspberry. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite dessert on your menu? Ooh, right now it's a lemon meringue cheesecake, uh, the Rocher brownie. All of our mini egg stuff is coming on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, oh my God, mini egg cookies are just next level. <laughs> so good. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Now, the other question I have for you, do you ever pause and take a moment to reflect on your journey? As of late, yeah. I've been doing that a lot. Like, there's been so many late nights where it's just me and Arjun at the warehouse cleaning up or getting work done. And sometimes he'll just be like, look at what you made. 
And I was like, wow, that's pretty insane. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, as of late, for sure. I just like sometimes I'll like close up the shop and like shut the lights down. I'm like, wow, like just wow. Mm -hmm. I have no words. Yeah. I'm super proud of the journey and super grateful. Good for you. What would older Ravina today uh, go and tell uh, the bullied younger uh, Ravina? Just keep going that this is going to be your superpower one day. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be your fuel. Yeah. Okay. And final, final question. And before here. you go to the final question, because yeah. you mentioned vision board. And I yeah. think a lot of viewers would love to hear that because yeah. I had a conversation with a friend the other day about vision board. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your belief sure. or your understanding of vision board and yeah. why you do so, it? I'm a huge believer of like law of attraction and manifestation. And I mean, a lot of people have the misconceptions like, okay, you think about it and then it's going to be yours. Like, no, you have to put the work in too. Right. But it, I also like in terms of like psychology, it's like selective attention almost. Right. So for example, if you you say if you start thinking about okay red punch buggies i will guarantee you you will probably see like five red punch buggies today it's because you're thinking about right, it you right know? so same thing with like a vision board so if let's say i put food network onto my vision board my brain is like okay let's primed for food network so i'm going to be subconsciously looking out for opportunities that align with food network and therefore they're going to seemingly fall into my lap but no, I'm putting in the work of like psychologically working for it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I want to meet Elon Musk. I need to put his yeah. picture on my vision board. Okay. Sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Do it. Totally. Yeah. Okay. No. Totally. Totally. I agree with you. It's almost like your brain is sending out transmitters to the yeah. universe to align you. Up 100%. With that, right? That's exactly mm-hmm. it. And you just have to believe that that's going to happen for you. Same with the warehouse. I put the warehouse on my vision board in 2021. I put an offer in, uh, in May of 2022. Yeah. So yeah. And it almost like it, it literally is almost exactly what wow. I wanted. Wow. Yeah. Hearing yes. you has inspired me to go complete me my too. vision board. Because yeah. we've been all working on it for start, years. I yeah. have a big board that's been in my closet. I'm like, okay, I'll get to it. Yeah. I'm going to get to it. I'm like, okay, I manifest. I'll get to it now. Right. I'm like, okay, I'm going to I'm I'm gonna step my game up one. and I'm going to go complete that task. Perfect. Yeah, me too. Play some Nipsey yeah. in the background. Exactly. Yeah. I won't yeah. talk about it anymore. I'll be for about sure. it. There yeah. you go. Yeah, I, th- I, I want to kind of redo mine. I, d- I wrote it out in January this year, but I'm like, okay, I am a visual person, so I feel like I need to so and you probably completed yeah. a lot of those tasks so now your vision is changing right, right. You're my, I was, it's so funny i was i have my old vision board like kind of tucked away i frame it usually so i can hang it up um and then so i have it in my in the spare room so i pulled it out i was like everything came true wow, wow. everything came true wow. insane yeah amazing mm-hmm. um okay this could be far-fetched but yeah. if you weren't doing what you're doing yeah. what would you want to be doing like do you want to go into forensics or anything so okay so I love true crime. So <laughs> oh, funny you said that. Oh. Yeah, I love true crime. Uh, so I think I would be kind of, if I'm in the realm of psychology, I would be there. Or, so fun fact about me, before I was baking, my other hobby was writing, creative writing. So I used to wow. write and read a lot of sci-fi fantasy books. So I have a few like unfinished novels that I wrote as a kid. They're like, you know, 600 pages. And I'm like, what? what wow. Are you? I'm just sitting on them. Wow. Yeah, they're not the best writing, honestly. I was like 15 when I wrote that's them. funny I have the couple but, of those I've written a couple of things and they're just yeah, like they're just what there. am I gonna do with it but I'm like well at least it's just journaling it's just out yes it's out, out mm-hmm. right out. so yeah yeah so I think I would either like be a, a novelist mm-hmm. or forensic psychologist <laughs> so that's amazing weird. very cool we're lining up here yeah okay now uh-huh uh, the, the question in the moment you, when it's all said and done yeah. and you're let's say 60 70 wherever you mm-hmm. know however long you have on this planet what is you what do you want your legacy and what do you want to be known for yeah i want to be known for it's a great question I, yeah i want to be known for for myself internally like i still went when i didn't think i had it in me that's really special to me and also like i just want to help inspire other people because like i i'm also a huge like follower of alex Cromosi, and he says this one thing is like sure legacy is great but like even after 200 years like there, the chances of your name still being around after 200 years is probably slim to none. So right. who can you impact now? Yeah. Who can you impact in your own like community and immediate immediateness, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's more important to me because I'm so lucky that I found my passion so early. Like I don't have any regrets of like, I don't think I should be doing anything else. So I feel so lucky that I don't have that, um, that I feel like I've been called to this at a really young age and I've seen it through or am seeing it through. So I think for me, it's just, I, I just hope people see, you know, what we built and the, the work required and hard work is something that is required for any type of success. So yeah, I just don't want to be a champion on that. That's amazing. Is mm-hmm. your soul happy? Yes. 
Definitely. I she seems tell. like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you're radiating. Yeah, yeah, you're radiating. radiating. Yeah. You know when you meet people yeah. when they, you. they found their passion yeah. and yeah, it, for like, sure. their eyes light up compared to everybody else in the world when we're like, we're just doing our job yeah. just because. Mm-hmm. And you can feel it from you. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I appreciate and that. And you said something about sugar feeds the soul you said to me earlier. Like just dessert is for your soul. Yeah. I like don't that. count your mm-hmm. calories. Dessert thank is for your soul. soul. There you go. Don't say nothing to me when you should be eating your cookies late at night. I'm a believer that we all have second stomachs meant for dessert. <laughs> that starts yeah. at zero every day, so it's okay. Absolutely, and your and your desserts, everything on the yeah. on the menu for oh, just cake cake shop is me. We're just gonna say, what the heck is in those chocolate chip, chip <laughs> cookies. cookies? Oh it's my like, god! I mean, want to see that from yeah. Dr- it's like crap. I know. Yeah. I, I, if I'm gonna go meet someone that's like that has probably has doesn't live in this area, yeah. If they're really special to me, I will uh-huh. make sure I go over yep. and get those cookies. Yeah, and awesome. there's also some people I'm like, they don't deserve these cookies. <laughs> they won't appreciate this. <laughs> Honestly, uh, like this sounds so fluffy, but I truly believe in the power of emotion when you're baking. Yeah, and that is like literally, it's love. love. It's just love. making with love. Yeah, and I can attest to my team, like you know, because we work on our culture and we care about the vibe in the bakery, like that speaks through our food. Like it will taste great because the culture is great, right? And there's obviously times where you know the vibe is not great, and like I can feel it like you know mm. so yeah no i think it, it truly is love like i will i'm yeah. so glad you said because i mm-hmm. was eating one of your cookies maybe a few months back and i was like what does she put in here <laughs> and then i remember my sing to yeah it's gotta be love Aww, like so it's, so it's fun that. it's so good that when there's only yeah. one left yeah. we'll take half <laughs> my dad will take a piece and we'll hide it for yeah. later oh you hide it after dinner That's only awesome. down to one they're closed now we start it. hiding and playing games with it it's so funny it's a simple recipe honestly like i put it i have it in my recipe book as well Oh, wow. like everyone getting to have it like I, I have oh. I'm, I'm not attached to my recipes in that way yeah. I will give anybody my recipes but it truly is like the motion you put behind it yeah. so yeah well it's almost like you know sometimes when it comes to food you have an aunt that gives you her famous yeah. Indian chicken curry yep. recipe but then you try and replicate yeah. it and it doesn't, it doesn't taste like same. that yeah. so I think you just have your signature it's like your hand or your hot they say yeah. and you just yeah. that's your jam right? totally totally I mean I'm, I'm not as hands on anymore but I'm very proud of the fact that my team is able to replicate yeah. that Wow. And that speaks volumes. So yeah, yeah. And I like to say I'm an official cookie connoisseur because mm. uh, I can tell. Like you said, sometimes when you can feel it, something like this is not a good batch. Somebody yeah. wasn't happy oh. today, or the batch. Yeah. Like I'm like, oh, this batch, and you know, yeah. you can tell when it's on a streak. But mm-hmm. we just, we just wanted to also say like we love everything about you. We oh, love everything you. that I your business stands that. for. Uh, we are going to do a huge shout out. Mm-hmm. So everyone in the Lower Mainland to all of our uh, our, our digital community and our friends and family on a tribe called Dylan Podcast. You got to check out Ravina yep. on oh, Just Cakes Bake Shop. Yep. We're going to do the Instagram plug. Yep. 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 She's like our pr- pride and joy for the community. <laughs> yeah. I, every time I go there, I'm like, thank God you opened up oh, here. Because yeah. most people of this caliber are like, I'm not yeah. going to stay here. I might go to yeah. South Surrey. I might go to downtown. Yeah. And the fact that you stay here, we're, just, yeah, like, we're blessed. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Like, kudos to you guys for doing this and, and cultivating this space as well. Like, it's so important. Like, I know off camera, we were talking about, you know, just perpetuating positiveness versus negativity Mm -hmm. and positivity versus negativity and that like you're actively doing that and that needs a round oh, of thank you. So, yeah, good for you guys thank and you. for calling me here like I had such a good time so thank you yeah. we're so appreciative and thank you for making yeah. time oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. we know yeah. you're one busy lady yeah. you got your production yeah. facility your real everything yeah. so just thank you for taking the time yeah, out to course. come share your learnings your Anytime. wisdom your knowledge yes. to our audience and so that you know I can tell you right now anyone that's going to be listening to today's episode I can tell you through the airwaves they're gonna be inspired oh, yes I'm so glad. I'm glad Miss, thank you this is Ravina Overroy yes. CEO yes. and yep. owner of Just thank Cake Face Up in the studio exactly. with the tribe Hustle awesome. and motivate. Yeah, yes. yes. motivate. Totally. Yes. So, with that said, friends and family, we hope you enjoyed today's content. We're so excited. I just want to pinch her. <laughs> I just want to pinch her, but hope you got some nuggets of information. And, like Ravina says, hustle, keep it going, don't give up, believe in yourself, and stand in your conviction. Um, we are going to be signing off. We're going to be back next week. Don't forget, if you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button. And until next week, friends and families, A Tribe Called Dylan podcast is signing off. Bye for now. Bye-bye.